how much money is in the average home in America? That's the question. So in America, there's over 50 million seniors that live in America and they're getting older. It's said that um, by 2060, there's going to be over 90 million people over the age of 65 living in America. What does everyone have in common uh, on this planet to a greater or lesser degree? People have personal property, whether they have very little personal property or grand estates and massive wealth. Um, either way, the average home in America contains personal property and at some point, people get older, they transition and it gets distributed certain ways. So some of the ways we see distributing personal property is in two families. So someone passes away and the family then takes all of it, they distribute it, you know, and that's awesome. That means that that family can have that legacy of those parents, those grandparents. And that's like one of the greatest situations. A lot of times people can only take so much. There's only so many, you know, of grandma's doilies that you can take before it's like, how many do I need, you know? Um, not saying that that's a huge ticket item, but there's a lot of items in people's homes that are worth something. There's a resale value for something. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about money matters and how much money can the average estate sale bring. So in the average estate sale, you're talking, you know, you got furniture. You're talking antiques. You're talking, you know, decor. You're talking jewelry. You're talking, you know, um, utilitarian. Spelling is not my strong suit, but I do know how to sell millions and millions of dollars worth of product out of a state sale. So that's what we're talking about today. How much money is in the average home? If you know, if you have a guess, place it in the comments. What do you think the average American home has in it worth of value? A lot of people don't want to talk about this because people don't want to talk about money. Let me tell you something, folks is that when our clients call us, there's one thing that they're interested in. They're interested in how much money is this sale going to bring for me and my family. You know why? Because a lot of families are dealing with the aftercare or the care of someone going into retirement. And it's not cheap going into retirement. We'll do a whole segment on what it costs to retire or what it costs to go into senior living. So that's why money matters with estate sales. There's many different things that can be inside of a home. There's many different things that can be worth money, lots of things that can't, you know, or that aren't. And that's why we're doing this segment today. So furniture, antiques, decor, jewelry, um, utilitarian items. Utilitarian items are like, you know, shovels and rakes and tools and, you know, yard equipment, lawn equipment, tractors, um, cleaning supplies, anything that you could imagine. So what's the average price? So first, I'm not gonna tell you, I want you guys to guess, what is the average value of an estate sale in America, of the average value of personal property if sold over the course of a weekend in the general market, what is that average value? Well, I'll tell you a few different things first. I'll tell you the average transaction last year we did about $2 million in gross sales, and the average transaction for $2 million was $56. I don't know how many transactions that is, but we can do the math. Let's say there's 2 million divided by 56. That's 35,714. 28.28 individual items that were sold at $56 an average transaction. Obviously there's pieces that we've sold for $20,000 and then there's pieces that we sold for 50 cents and then everywhere in between. The average estate in America has value. It has value in it. It has value from anything that you could imagine, whether it's a desk, like I said, a cleaning supply, a tool, Sometimes there's tools and the, the difference is the value 
is dependent upon what that item is. So take a screwdriver, for example. You have, you know, a screwdriver made in China might be worth 50 cents. Where you have a screwdriver made in America by Snap-on, and it could be worth $200, you know, for a very similar tool. And then you have the whole way between. You have Craftsman. You have HK. You have, you know, you, you got Mac. And you kind of go up this line, and so you need somebody that can come into your home and address, what do you have? Do you have tools that are worth 50 cents, or do you have tools that are worth $200 each? And that's how it is with every single item. This is a huge part of our pricing training is that every single thing on this planet has a scale, a scale from nothing to something. So let's take, you know, we're talking about tools right there. Let's take, we're talking about, you know, a wallet. I could buy a wallet at the dollar store and I could buy a Louis Vuitton wallet for 600. And I can buy a dollar store wallet for $1. And then there's the range, there's everywhere in between. There's $100 wallets, there's $50 wallets, there's $20 wallets, there's $10 wallets, there's dollar wallets, and everywhere in between. So if you don't know what those items are worth, you can make a huge mistake selling things. And that's why we're talking about the money matters. When you're hiring an estate sale company, when you're having an estate sale, when you're doing it yourself, you need to know what the things are worth. I've sold, you know, Let's think about the things that we've sold. Um, dolls. One of the first dolls that I sold, I don't recall the name, but I do remember it was when I was buying and selling antiques. This was about 12 years ago. And I remember going into this house in Detroit and finding this doll. I didn't know anything about it and sold it for $1,800. Well, guess what? You can go to a dollar store and get a, dollar, a doll that's a dollar. You can get a Barbie. You can get a, a new Barbie that's $25. You can get a vintage Barbie that's $1,000. You can have a you know, cabbage patch that's 25. You can have an all American girl doll that's 300. And then you can have all the way up and down the scale. We've sold dolls that are $5,000 a piece. Money matters and the reason why people hire us is because we know the value of what we're selling. Um, Crazy, 15K. So John Harris says the average home has $15,000. I'm gonna write those guesses up here. 15K, the average home has $15,000 worth of estate sale value. That is a very good guess. It's not right, but it's a very good guess. What does the average home have in America worth of personal property? I'm talking everything from your clothing, cleaning supplies, furniture, decor, you know, your computers, your tablets, your all these things. Resale value, what is the average that a home has in America? And it's gonna surprise you, you know, I think. It surprised me. So this is something when people are like, do I have enough to have an estate sale? Um, you know, what, what can I sell? What types of things can I sell? Well, we can sell anything. Anything that you have purchased before can be purchased again by someone else. That's my number one rule when somebody asks me, should I keep this, should I sell this, should I, what should I do? Is I'm like, if you have purchased it, someone else will. If you bought it, someone else will too. Someone else will too. So. A lot of people, we start seeing them chucking stuff or throwing stuff out or cleaning stuff out. We just signed a deal last Saturday. They had two homes. One was this 1940s cabin on the lake, you know, and it was, it was straight out of the 40s and they cleared it out. They just, they donated everything that was there. They just didn't know, you know, they just didn't know what to do. We drove to that home and uh, we was like, man, unfortunately, there's not a lot here. Then we drove to the next home in Warren, Michigan, and it was packed, and they didn't touch it yet, and it was full, and it was worth an estate sale, and we're doing an estate sale for them at the end of this month, and it's just like, man, I wish they would have, I wish we could have helped them before. 
I wish we could have helped them know that, hey, don't throw those things out. Don't throw the tools out. Don't throw the guns out. Don't throw the you know stuff out. We can help you sell them. But that's just how it goes. That's why I do these videos is because I want to help every senior in America downsize. There's over 50 million seniors in America. By 20, I forget what the math is now. I think it was 2030, there's gonna be 90 million. 90 million senior citizens in America. And what happens? Like People want to be free. They want to be free of the stuff. There's so much stuff that we collect. We collect all this stuff all the time. And it just kind of gets put, you know, when you have a house to keep it in, this is why I downsized to a condo. Because, and I've been looking at houses and I'm like, man, if I had that closet, I'd never get rid of anything because I just keep buying stuff and keep filling the closet until I have a closet full of stuff and I wear five things out of it. Do you guys know? You guys do that too. You know, it's, it's at some point you have to downsize, you have to free. And at some point when you get into age, that stuff starts becoming more and more feeling like a prison and people just want to be free of everything that they have so that they can go live their life. Imagine being 65 and sitting there and wanting to go to Florida, wanting to live your life, but you're sitting here and you know, you're like, man, I really got to organize that, that garage or I really got to you know, do that landscaping work or man, if I'm going to sell this house, I really got to get through this project or that project. And you're trapped then by your stuff. Well, the average home in America by survey in 2019 by estatesales.net has $20,000 worth of value. The average home, the average estate sale, the average personal property that you could sell over the course of a weekend in your town averages about $20,000. So John, you were really close. Thank you so much for giving us that, uh, that answer. The answer is 20. We've done sales that are $5,000. We've done sales that are $250,000. The range is massive, you know? Um, the range is massive, but the average sale is about 20 grand. So I'll put that up here. So why hire an estate sale company? Why hire a professional company to do this downsizing? Well, first of all, knowing what the items are, knowing what they're worth, knowing that this notebook I can sell for 50 cents and knowing that another notebook I can sell for $10. That might not sound like a lot, but for you to pay a percentage to somebody who's gonna get the, you know, let's say you pay 50% and that person gets $10 for that notebook when you would have sold it for 50 cents and you didn't have to do any of the work. That's what I should be talking about. That's what's important is let's do the estate sale math. Let's say you have a $20,000 estate sale and an estate sale company charges, let's say 50-50 split, 10,000. And then they're gonna charge you probably a thousand bucks for clean out, you know? So you're left with $9,000. And you're like, man, $9,000, but there was $20,000 worth of value there. Guess what? You didn't do any of the work and then all of those things, who knows if you would have been able to produce $20,000 out of that house the advertising, the marketing, the pricing, the research, the staging, to get through and organize a whole house, it's a whole project. It's a whole event system, event management that we do as a company. We consider ourselves two things in this business, a sales organization and event planners. And if you know anything about event planning, you have a deadline, you have a massive amount of work that has to get done in that deadline, and it has to be done right. You mess up on one item, and you could throw a $20,000 item out the door, you know? Somebody could run in, grab it, and it'd be gone. That's why you hire a professional. That's some average math, like $20,000 sale, you know, you get eight or 9,000 from it as a, as a person. And that company makes the 9K to pay for their staff and their bills and everything else. Um, let's say, you know, you have a $50,000 sale. You know, they charge, let's say on $50,000, what do we charge? 40%, you know? What is that, 20? And then that leaves you $30,000. This is real. Like, we help clients with 50, 60, 70, $100,000 estate sales. That $20,000, that goes to paying for all the advertising all the setup labor, all the sale labor, 
the cash out materials, the supplies, the tables, the display cases, the cloth, the vans that come and bring the employees and all the supplies, the office staff that are going to be handling your accounting, you know, that communication that you get. That's real, man. Estate sales can bring massive, massive amounts of value to that home selling process, the downsizing process, and they're not to be overlooked and they're not to be, you know, cheaped on, if you will. I don't know what the right term for that is. Um, <clears throat> But even take it like this, you hire a company and they charge 25%. I've heard of this recently and it makes me really sad because I know the money. So let's say you have a $10,000 sale and they charge 25%, you know, or 30% even. They make $3,000 over the course of that weekend, you know. You can't do business at $3,000 for a week. If you, maybe if it's you and your partner, you know, and you and someone else, and you guys are just doing this, and you guys make $3,000, but let me tell you, with insurance, taxes, um, cost, payroll cost, payroll taxes, it's, it's gone, dude. You cannot hire, I, I think of it like this. Would you have someone come into your home that's making nine bucks an hour, searching through your stuff, organizing, displaying, that you have to trust, that you have to give keys to? I wouldn't, you know, I want somebody who's thriving, who's doing well. So I would rather pay more money. The other thing about going with a company that charges less money is let's say there's a $10,000 sale, but they don't have all the advertising in place. They don't have the team that comes in and does the photography. They don't have all the marketing avenues. And so really they sell you, they're like, yeah, there's probably $10,000 worth of value here. And then all of a sudden it does five and you're getting, you know, 65% of that. That is 66, I don't know why I did that. You know, you're getting 65% of 5,000 instead of 50% of 10. That's real. We had a client call us last week and they were like, man, I should have went with you guys. I didn't, my husband wanted to go with the cheaper person. Can you guys come and redo my estate sale? It bombed. I don't know how it bombed. The sale was amazing. The sale was a nice $15,000, $20,000 sale and it bombed. It didn't help this family. She was calling us saying, I, I made the wrong choice. And how else can I communicate to her that before she makes that decision? You know, that's why we do these videos. Um, do you have, or is there stats on the average yard sale for someone to do their sale themselves? Um, Exactly. I, I agree. And Doug, you know, same thing. Like even at 50%, I'm not doing the work. I'm just making bank. Exactly. The other thing about the 50% and you not doing the work is that you also don't have to pay for it. It's all in the stuff that's sitting there. It's literally all in the stuff. You know, we don't even charge on most jobs. Like there's a very select few that we do charge an upfront cost on. Um, and that's real because sometimes there's an excessive amount of labor or there's hoarder situations. But the average estate sale, we charge no down payment, no you know upfront fees. It's the standard percentage. There's a couple other costs in there to do with clean outs. But you don't have to write a check when you sign up with us. We literally do this entire business with what on commission, with what we make from your sale. So if we fail, which we won't, that's it. We can't fail, you know. Um, so it's very interesting to do this business on commission and when every other system, you know, every other business takes fees up front because they got to cover that. We go off of commission off of stuff that we sell that you have already purchased stuff that's sitting there. So you don't have to pay for the service at all. It pays for itself. Stats on the average yard sale, John Harris. Well, you would know better than me. If I guess this, I would say your average garage sale makes 2.5 to 5,000 because you do really big yard sales. I would say that if somebody is doing, let's say you do an estate sale and it's a $10,000 estate sale and you do it yourself, I guarantee you, you're going to see five out of it. You're going to see half. And that's what it's like when you hire an amateur. Same thing. You hire someone else to do the basic stuff is you're going to get half. If you don't have the right company in there that knows what they're doing, it doesn't matter what it is. Peace. Um.
I need to bring other people from my office on this show sometime. But I would say half. I would say if you're going to do the sale yourself, you're going to get half of the value. Or if you're going to hire an amateur, you're going to get half of the value. And this is what I say. I would say, would you rather give 50% out of 10 or 35% out of 5, you know? I would rather make $5,000 than, you know, 2,500 or whatever that is. What is that? Third? That's 1,500. That leaves you with, man, that's crazy. So money matters. How much money is there in the average home is about $20,000. How much money if you do it yourself or if an amateur estate sale person does it, it's going to be half of whatever the value is. There is value in everything. I'll go over one last thing with you guys, and that is our different types of buyers. Now, I wrote this article for my staff, an internal article called The Complexity of Price. And it's a pricing document that I use to train my staff um, along with a whole pack that's that big. So I'll, I'll, if I can remember it, I wrote it so many years ago, but The Complexity of Price. There's these different types of buyers. The first one, first one's the collector. This, how we define a collector is somebody that actually collects the item for themselves or they're buying it for themselves for collector purposes. Now, a collector will pay more money to get something that's in better condition because they are always trying to buy or obtain things that are in better and better condition. Even if they have the same item already, they will still pay more money or pay good money to get something that's in better condition. So a collector is buying for themselves, they'll pay more money than a dealer or anyone else because they're not looking to resell that item, they're looking to own that item for themselves, so the collector. The next is the dealer. The next type of shopper that we have at estate sales is the dealer. The dealer is the person who's coming in looking to buy something to resell it. Usually, a fair dealer is looking for a 50-50 split. If they spend 500, they want to make 500. That means it needs to be a $1,000 item. If they're buying something for $20, they need to you know, at least get 40, 50 out of it. Obviously, they have their fees, they have their taxes, they have their business expenses. So sometimes a dealer is looking to pay you 20% or 30% on the dollar because they're going to go and resell it. So dealers are not the ideal customer for an estate sale. So there's collectors, dealers, um, and then, hey Matt, never mind. Um, there's collectors, dealers, there's utilitarian. U T I L I. Utilitarian buyers. I was going to ask you if you could grab the pack that's on the desk, or Sarah's desk. It's like a training pack. It's like a training pack that's on Sarah's desk. Can you bring it to me? Um, collector, dealer, utilitarian shoppers. I'm sorry if I'm screaming in your ear. Um, utilitarian shoppers are people who are buying things to use. So this means ladders, this means tools, this means cleaning supplies, this means, you know, paper towels. This means anything that you could use kind of in your everyday life is utilitarian buyers. And then there's the decorator. The decorator could be professional. They could be a professional decorator that's looking to you know, buy something for a client for them, or it could also be just somebody who wants something for their house, something to de decorate their house. This is a huge point, nothing, Never mind. Um, this is a huge part of our market is decorators. We want to sell to these top two people. We wanna to sell to the collectors and the decor, and then the dealer and utilitarian. You know, I guess I would do this a little differently. Um, I would say, you know, collectors, decor, utilitarian, and then at the bottom is dealers. Now, don't get me wrong. Dealers make up a massive part of our market, and they're so, so appreciated, and probably a lot of the people who are going to be watching something like this. So don't, don't cut my head off. But we want to sell to the dealers on the second and third day of the sale when prices are discounted. We don't want the dealers running in and just buying everything. That means we had it underpriced. You know what I'm saying? So we're looking for the collectors, we're looking for the decorators, and we're looking for utilitarian buyers at first. That's how we're pricing when we come into a home. As we're hitting those three markets, we look at an item and we say, who does this fall under? Who are we pricing this for? 
what is the purpose of this price that we're putting on there? Because anything can be worth anything, you know? This phone, I could sell it right now for $300, I could sell it for $500, I could sell it for $600, I could probably sell it for $800. And none of those are right or wrong, it just depends on, you know, what I wanna get out of it or what I have into it or my considerations on how long I've had it or how hard it is to sell or all these other things. So that's what we're looking at is these three markets four plus the dealers, collectors, decorators, utilitarian dealers. There might be another one. I'm gonna bring my training pack in here. That's what I'm gonna do starting off and then I'm gonna start just going through my training pack with you guys and teaching you guys how we do estate sales. Um, pricing is a huge point for us because money matters. Money matters in our job because that's why people hire us. People don't hire us because you know we're, we're the nicest or we're the cutest or whatever. They hire us because we're gonna produce the best value financially for that client. When our clients are looking to liquidate the property, the only reason or the only product that they're looking for is my house is empty, it's well taken care of, and I've made the most money that I can possibly make out of this estate. Those are the most important things to us. And I think the most important things to our clients. So if you or someone you know needs an estate sale, my name is Aaron Sapirsky. We help families nationwide. Our phone number is 248-915-8888. Uh, please feel free to reach out, hit us up. Also, you can email me and I'll send you something. Um, I'm sending a few people today our client information pack. This is something I just posted up secretly on LinkedIn. This is um, a pack that has all of our information, all of our data, our secrets, how we do estate sales. Um, I think you need this. Definitely, definitely, definitely email me at Aaron at aaronsestatesales.com or send me a message through Facebook. Um, thank you guys for joining us. I really appreciate it. And I hope that this has been of value. And um, if not, then I hope the next one or the next one or the next one will be of value because that's what the purpose of this is. So I really appreciate your time and keep, keep a state.